Rotation matrices are useful for understanding oscillatory systems in physics, engineering, and biology. In this video, we construct rotation matrices and then show how eigenvector eigenvalue analysis can unveil their presence in dynamical systems. In the xy plane, draw a blue vector v. Obtain another vector v prime by rotating without scaling. Yellow vector v prime has the length of blue vector v, written as v in italic font. The original blue vector v makes an angle phi with the x-axis. The new yellow vector v prime makes an angle theta with the old vector v. Using the x and y axes as a coordinate grid, the components vx and vy of the original blue vector are v cosine phi and v sine phi. Likewise, the components of yellow vector v prime are v cosine on phi plus theta and v sine on phi plus theta. Using angle addition formulas including the one we demonstrated in the video on Euclidean geometry and trigonometry, we can re-express the trigonometric functions of phi plus theta in terms of products of trigonometric functions of phi alone and trigonometric functions of theta alone. Multiply the number v distributively. Recognize v cosine phi as vx and recognize v sine phi as vy. Switch the order of the terms in the bottom component so that the term with vx appears first. Perform finger exercises to confirm that the components of the blue vector v can be arranged off to the right as a column vector as shown. Together, the matrix of trigonometric functions and the blue column vector provide the components of the yellow vector v prime. This matrix equation represents the rotation of the blue vector v by a so-called rotation operator r hat, which spits out the rotated yellow vector v prime. The rotation operator is parametrized by theta, indicating the particular amount of rotation it provides. On the xy plane, draw the blue vector v represented by components vx, vy. Hitting once with the rotation operator r hat is represented by multiplying once by the rotation matrix. Hitting a second time with rotation operator r hat corresponds to multiplication a second time by the rotation matrix. A third rotation corresponds to a third matrix multiplication, and so forth. If you have a dynamical system in which a rotation matrix is used to express the system state at one step in time in terms of the system state at the previous time step, then you know that the dynamics of the system will be described by walking around a circle in angular steps of theta. It becomes easy to draw and to describe the long-term dynamics of the system. Would you be able to recognize a rotation matrix when working with a dynamical system if the cosines and sines were not handed to you on a platter? What if you had decimal numbers? What if you were working abstractly in terms of unknown parameters? How would you analyze decimal representations or variable names to determine whether a dynamical system of interest exhibited motion around a circle? We can use eigenvector eigenvalue analysis to recognize rotation. What are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this rotation matrix? Write an equation to solve for the eigenvalues lambda by attaching minus lambdas to the terms on the main diagonal and forming the product of the off-diagonal terms. Rewrite as a quadratic equation in descending powers of lambda. Please check that the two solutions obtained using the quadratic equation are cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, call that lambda plus, and cosine of theta minus i sine of theta, call that lambda minus. Using Euler's formula, we abbreviate cosine of theta plus or minus i sine of theta as e to the plus or minus i theta. The eigenvalues have real and imaginary parts. They are complex. Using the northern row of the rotation matrix and substituting in the eigenvalues lambda plus or minus, we can write an equation that relates the x and y vector components. Plugging in the lambdas and doing some algebra, we get eigenvectors with components 1 and minus or plus i. Or you can choose other overall scalar multiples of these if you like. Using these two vectors as a basis, we can express some generic vector w as a linear combination of the vector 
with the minus i component and the vector with the plus i component. The plus and minus in the weighting coefficients w plus and w minus correspond to the plus or minus attached to lambda, which confusingly but correctly is the reverse of the minus or plus attached to the i's in the vector components. Hitting vector w with the rotation operator r hat multiple times is like hitting the column vector representation of vector w with the corresponding rotation matrix the same number of times, which is like hitting the individual pieces of the column vector representation with the rotation matrix multiple times and tickling out multiplicative factors of the eigenvalues lambda plus and lambda minus. It's like shaking fruit from a tree. Applying the rotation operator r hat n times corresponds to taking the eigenvalues lambda plus and lambda minus to the nth power. Substitute in the expression for lambdas in terms of complex exponentials. We get e to the i n theta and e to the minus i n theta. To make clear that this machinery with complex exponentials taken to the nth power produces rotations, consider the simple example where w plus equals w minus equals w over 2. Write out the first component of this column vector by dragging your eyes along with the yellow highlighters. Do the same to look at the bottom component, which has the imaginary root i. In the bottom component, multiply outside and in the denominator by the factor i. Two powers of i spit out a minus one, which cancels out the negative sign already out front. Use Euler's formula to re-express the complex exponentials in terms of trigonometric functions. Here there's a minus sign in the middle. The plus i sine n theta to the left and the minus i sine n theta to the right cancel. Similarly, re-express the complex exponentials in the bottom component in terms of trigonometric functions, again minding the negative sign in the exponent that corresponds to a negative sign here. Noticing this negative sign, we see that the cosine terms instead of the sine terms cancel here. The two cosines in the top component divided by 2 give one copy of cosine, and the two sines in the bottom component divided by 2 and with i's cancelling out give sine. When n equals 0, the vector w is flush with the x-axis. As n increases, the cosine and sine components of the vector w walk around the circle. For the particular initial condition studied here, the components of W are purely real. All the imaginary I stuff went away. How should the coefficients W plus and W minus be modified to represent an initial vector pointing at an arbitrary initial angle relative to the x-axis? Can you plot the eigenvectors 1 plus or minus I on the xy plane? Why not? When performing eigenvector eigenvalue analysis on a dynamical system, think about whether you can demonstrate that your eigenvalues and eigenvector components are real. If you can show that you have complex eigenvalues floating around, you should look out for rotations, or as we discuss later, spiral patterns.